will be the end result of those who don't embrace the words of the Messiah. Weeping and gnashing of teeth. Hallelujah. God is a good God, but he is also a God of judgment. Our God is a good God, but he is also a God of wrath. Our God is a good God, but he's also a God that brings judgment. And God is saying, I will bring judgment on the land. Judgment is coming on the land. And God loves you. God cares for you. How you doing, sir? Hey, I'm okay. Hey, did you want to talk? Talk personally or? Okay. Hey, God bless you. God bless you. Okay. Okay. First Peter 4 and 11 speaks. And if any man speak, let him speak according to the oracle of the Lord. Now, not to degrade what you're doing, but if you speak, you must speak according to the Bible. What the Bible says. Is there something I said that wasn't according to the Bible? Acts chapter 8, verse 20. I also speak. If any man speak, Isaiah, thank you, James, like 8 and 20. If any man speak not according to this gospel, it's because there is no light in him. Now, Christianity has been around for over 400 years. Hold on one second. So, what? Also, this story says it might be like five feet away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on a second. So, it was there something, like I said, was there something that I just said that was wrong? You were ranting. You were ranting. So, my thing is, or my question would be, I have two questions. The whole night. My first question would be, Paul says in Galatians chapter 1, verse 8 to 10, if anybody comes speaking any other gospel, the gospel we teach, even an angel, let him be a curse. Now, my first question would be, what gospel are you teaching and what Jesus are you teaching according to the Bible? My second question would be, do you believe that the people over there in Israel, actually two questions, the people in Israel today are the children of of Yahweh. Not everybody, just like not everybody that went through the Atlantic slave trade is people of Yahweh. Some are, some are not. I agree. Now, do you agree that the one, the, the some that you believe that are over there, there are other children of Yahweh, do you believe that Deuteronomy 28 verse 68, can you tell me when did they, the ones over there, the Jewish people, go into slavery on slave ships? Um, well, first of all, um, I don't know everybody's particular history, but I do know what the word of the Lord says. They'll be scattered to the four corners of the earth, which means that not every single curse in Deuteronomy 28 applies to every single person. If it did, that would mean, that would mean everybody has a disease. So this is not true. So, yes, Israel did go through slave ships from Alexandria. Even in the first century, they were scattered all throughout the Roman Empire. Also, even in the transatlantic slavery, many went through that as well. Many. But they're not the only four groups of Jews or Hebrews that, that got scattered. And you, and you agree with that, correct? I don't agree with that. So you think ever, all of them went in the, trans, the transatlantic slavery, uh, slave trade? Okay. The book of Deuteronomy 28, as you're familiar in your seminary school. Not seminary school, just the word of the Lord. Let, let us talk the oracles of God. Are you telling me that they were not scattered to the four corners of the earth? Is that what? No. I'm correcting you on your point. Your point was that in Alexander days or in the book of the Apocrypha, the book of the Apocrypha. No, not, not Apocrypha. I'm talking about first, first century. No, no. In the time that I'm speaking, I'm not speaking first century. We want to speak first, we, we can't speak first century. I'm speaking at the time of the Maccabees with Alexander Great. At that time, you didn't have America. You didn't have the New World, right? You agree with that, right? Sure. Okay. When you read the book of Deuteronomy 28, verse 44, 45, and 46, it speaks about the people having their language and their name being changed. 
When you read verse 48, it also speaks about them having chains or yokes of iron upon their necks. When you read verse 32, it speaks about them being sent to another nation and not having power to receive their children or their seed back. When you read verse 54 and 55, it speaks about brother hating brother. It speaks about a mother not having any kind of love for her children. When you read verse 68, it speaks about a people not going back to Egypt. No, going back to Egypt again, but this time going on slave ships. Now we know today is symbolic. I look downtown, there's a huge pyramid downtown on Bill Street. As we know, the Aztecs, and even in America and around the world, speaks about um, uh, of the pyramids. Okay, my thing is blood terms. Because there's a lot of young ears and, and a lot of young eyes out here. They might not understand the terminology and the, and, the, and the etymology of words that me and you might know. So don't try to keep this blunt and to the point. There's no people on the planet except for the so-called African-Americans, so-called blacks. I say so-called blacks because the young lady right there, her pants is black. Black is a crayon color in a crayon box. We have been given an identity. And the reason why we laugh and we joke about young things like young Dolph and Yo God is because we have no identity. So when you're out here preaching the word of God, that's why I have to ask you, what Jesus are you teaching? Because the Jesus that we teach saves the lost sheep. These are your lost sheep, the ones that are lost. Nothing against you, Pastor. We follow you on Facebook, YouTube, everything. But our concern as the Maccabees of Isaac, Israelite saints all about Christ, our school is down here in Bishop also, is what Christ, what Jesus are you teaching? Well, if you, if you watch me on YouTube, then you know what Jesus I'm preaching. I know what Jesus I'm preaching. I'm preaching the Jesus that died, was buried, and rose again, who first went to the lost sheep of the house of Israel and told his disciples to go into all the world and make disciples of all nations, Matthew 28, 18 to 20, uh, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, teaching them to obey all, no, 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 I'm just saying reading literal. He said, everything you say, let it be the oracles of God. No, no, let's go to Matthew 28, his last and final words. Go into all the world and make disciples of all nations, right? No, no, you ask me. You ask me which Jesus I preach. I'm telling you, let me finish my answer. Let me finish my answer. This is the answer that I'm telling you. Jesus told his disciples to go into all the world and preach the gospel to all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. He said that you will be witnesses from Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to all the earth. And that this gospel will be preached of all the nations as a witness. So this is what the word of the Lord says. I'm not ranting. And if you actually look at the preachings of Jesus and also of the apostles, it was not every time they preached, they quoted a scripture every single time. They preached by the authority of the Almighty God. And everything I said was true. So if, you, if there was something I said that wasn't true, point it out, and I will repent. So what did I say that was not true? And you shall know that I am the Lord. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. And that I am the Lord, your God, and none else. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. And that I am the Lord, your God, your God, your God, and none else. And none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. Now you said, you said that the gospel was given to all nations. The Bible just told me he's the God of Israel and none else. Read this real quick. Look at Psalm chapter 147 verse 19. He showed his word unto Jacob, unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel, unto Israel, unto Israel. He had not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgment, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. Was there something I said that was wrong? Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Look at Malachi chapter 3, verse 6. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. My question to you, at what point did God, Yahweh, 
change the gospel only being for Israel with the other nations he don't know no we just read it and to giving the, the gospel to all nations if you don't change he says I'm the Lord your God and none else now hold on God said God said Yahweh says his word shall not come back to him void so if God says Israel is my chosen people and I'm your God and none else you can't repeat this thing He's Israel's God. He's none other God. Now, the only thing you might can do, you might can bring in a replacement theology and saying that Israel no longer exists, which I have to take you down to Jeremiah 33, verse 5, which speaks of the ordinance of the sun and of the moon to appear. Then Israel will no longer be a nation before me. So the gospel you're teaching, you're not teaching the gospel of the Bible because God, Yahweh, is the God of Israel and none else. Psalm 147, verse 19 and 20, he says he gave his law to Jacob. The other nations don't know them. So you have to show me where God word came back to him more. Because Joel 2 and 27 supposedly said that I'm the Lord your God and none else. You just said he's the God of everybody who all this to be saved. All this stuff here. This is the balance. Well, can I just ask you something? Where in any of your texts did it say the gospel was only for the Jews? Because no. you did it say that? I didn't actually. No, because you wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, because I'm listening to you very carefully. And I hope you're listening to me very carefully. There's nothing wrong with what you said. That's the word of the Lord. But where in whatever you say, because you're throwing in words on top of the words, and that's a violation of the law. You just you're talking about the gospel right now. You're saying where you're not talking about the gospel. Was he just talking about the gospel? So what are you talking about right now? Because if you're talking about people, I'm talking about the gospel. I'm saying the gospel shall be preached in all nations as a witness. And you just tried to use some scriptures in the wrong way, and you're using gospel. Watch the video. Did, was he talking gospel? Did he say gospel? So maybe you made it. So make it clear. Let me make it clear. Psalms chapter 147, 19 and 20. You hear me? Everybody hear me? The Bible says God only gave his laws, statutes, and commandments. Now, under these laws, statutes, and commandments exists the new covenant and the old covenant. Here's Hebrews chapter 8, verse 8, which I will make a new covenant with Israel. So it goes right back to Psalms 147, verse 19 and 20, which says he didn't give his laws to no one else but Israel. Joel 2 and 27 says, I only love Israel. I'm your God. I'm nobody else's God. Now, for us, the gospel, the gospel, the covenants, and anything else you bring out the precepts evolve under the laws, statutes, and commandments, Pastor. Now, you want to bring the gospel? You want to bring the old covenant, new covenant? All that revolves under the laws, statutes, and commandments. His, he's only dealing with Israel. He's only their God. Okay, then you have a problem with a lot of scriptures there. And, and so I'm just going to read them for you, if, if that's what you'd like me to do. Because if, look, listen, all I'm trying to, hold on, come on, I listen to you. I listen to you. One more statement, I'm done. Understand it. Now, I was a Christian pastor for over 12 years. I make one statement for you. I've been where you are. You cannot interpretate the, the New Testament without the Old. The Old Testament is the New Testament concealed. The New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. So you need one and one together. Christ says I come in the volume of the book. So in order to understand any New Testament scripture that you might pull, the only precept must be from a precept. It only takes you right back to the Old Testament, which I just made it clear that God, well, the Bible made it clear that he's only dealing with Israel. Okay, well, well, here, here's the problem that um, you, you do have. And I'm just going to read a few scriptures to all of you, whether you want to hear it or not. But the word of the Lord says in the New Covenant, and I'll read as many passages as I can if you want to hear it. And I'll just pull it up. Hallelujah. It says here. In Zechariah, first of all, this is Old Covenant stuff. 
Zechariah 2 and 11, King James Version. Many nations shall be joined to the Lord in that day and shall be my people. And I will dwell in the midst of you and you shall know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto you. Many nations will be joined. Number two, Psalms 86 and 9. All nations whom you have made shall come and worship before you, O Lord, and shall glorify your name. Number three, Jeremiah chapter one and five. Before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. And before you came forth out of the womb, I sanctified you and ordained you a prophet unto the nations. So all the other, everything in the word of God is true. Number four, in the new covenant, Matthew 24 and 14. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. And then shall the end come. The only thing you can try to say to kind of get out of that is to try to say, well, you know what? The Israelites were in all the different nations and they spoke different languages. And I know what you're going to try to say. But the problem with that, it doesn't line up with the rest of scripture. I know the Bible just like you do, uh, partially on certain things. So this is, so I'll, 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 I'll keep reading. So it says here, and I'll keep going. It says in Mark chapter 13 and 10, and the gospel shall be first published unto all nations. Luke 24 and 47, that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. Romans 1 and 5, by whom we have received grace and apostleship for the obedience of the faith among all nations for his name. Matthew chapter 8, verses 10 to 12. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that follow, Verily I say to you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And I say unto you that many shall come from the east and the west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven and the children of the kingdom. Who is that? Who's the children of the kingdom that Jesus is speaking about? The Israelites. And, and who, who are the Israelites? A physical people with physical lineage of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Hence, Jeremiah 33 verse 5. If these ordinances depart from me, if the sun stops shining, you know this, Pastor. If the sun stops shining and the moon stops shining, may Israel as a nation on earth be no more. Okay, I agree, I agree with you. The sun is still shining, Pastor. The moon is up right now. Which means, if the Bible is true, and it is true, there is a nation here on the earth. 100%. Who are the Israelites? Now, concerning... Let me, just, let me finish with this, because the Israelites, are they, are they 12 tribes? All 12 tribes. Okay, good. So it says here, you shall come, many shall come from the east and the west and sit down with Abraham. And hold on a second. And sit down with Abraham and Isaac. Sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom who you agree was the people of Israel, which are 12 tribes, shall be cast out into outer darkness, and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So obviously, the people that are sitting down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are not the Israelites. This doesn't mean that God has God has replaced the Israelites or doesn't have a purpose for that. That's not what I'm saying. Right. This is saying that many who are not national Israelites right. will sit down in the kingdom with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That is the words of our Lord and Savior, Mashiach. Okay, so, so you saying? I'm not saying. The precepts of the Amen. word of the Lord says. Amen. Now, now, what I hear you saying is that a person... What I hear him saying, what Jesus said, what Yeshua said. What I hear you reading, what I'm saying literally, what you're reading through the scriptures is that a person of a non nationality can become a spiritual Israelite. What I'm saying is they can be embraced in the kingdom of God. What I'm saying is that when they have the spirit of the true Hebrew inside of them, they are welcomed into the kingdom of God. Okay. Uh, give me Isaiah. Right, right, right. Give me that. So are you denying what our Messiah said? Will they sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Yes or no? Yeah, Just answer go. the question. Will they sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and they're not of national Israel? Yes or no? I'm going to prove it through Scripture. So if, just yes or no and then prove it through Scripture. i got to prove it through Scripture. So are you going to say yes or no? Let your yea be yea and your no be no. They will be sit, sitting down. Yeah. Okay, good. I 
Isaiah chapter 14, verse 1, King James Version. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob. Have mercy on Jacob. Have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel. And will yet choose Israel. And will yet choose Israel. And set them in their own land. And set them in their own land. In their own land because they have to be in someone else's land for him to return them back to their land. And the strangers shall be, and the strangers, the strangers, the strangers they were speaking about, they will be there. Shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob, and the people shall take them and bring them to their place. Put the nations in their place. Rio. Verse 2, Isaiah chapter 14, verse 2 to be part. And the house of Israel shall possess them. And the house of Israel shall possess them. And the house of Israel shall possess them. Pastor, what does it mean to possess something? It means they'll be their slaves. Right. Do you believe the Bible? I do believe the Bible. So who are the Israelite slaves in this Bible? Speaking about the Gentile nations that will be under subjection to the people of Israel. Who are they? The nations that are not national Israel. Right. And the house of Israel. Verse is that again? Uh, Isaiah chapter 14, verse 2. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. What? For servants and handmaids. What? For servants and handmaids. Now, when we were brought over here on slave ships, where everybody wants to deny. See, Jesus, the black Christ, he said that all nations shall hate you for my name's sake. We're the only people on the planet that people hate us. But they love our culture. They love to look black, dance black, shook black. But when it's time to come and live in a ghetto, no, I can't go over there. That's not for Christ Jesus says sake. they're going to hate you for my name's sake. Right. Now, we just read that the servants of the Israelites are going to serve them, are going to serve them for, for servants and for handmaids. My question to you is, who are those people who are going to be subject or subjugated or slaves to the Israelites in that Bible? Well, it does say in the word of the Lord that Israel is servants to the Lord and that the greatest of them was a servant unto all, which was Je uh, my, I'm, I'm answering your question. And it says that we will all serve one another in the kingdom. And so it doesn't matter who. So you don't let me finish. Let me finish. Because the purpose of the gifts of the spirit are to serve. Jesus said, the way you see me is what you should do to others. He washed the feet of his people. And, no, I'm not. So he, he, you're, not, you're not in my shoes. I don't know you. But listen, but, I, but if you let me finish, if you let me finish, because what you're, you're missing is this, is that Jesus, when he was on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them for, for what they, uh, they know not what they do. And the people of Israel said, let that curse be on us and on our children's children. So that curse was upon the people of Israel, which is what led them to go astray. And their need of forgiveness is the same need of, of all people. All have been proven to be sinners. I'm, at, I'm, not, answering, I'm not adding to the word. Let me finish. I don't, I don't interrupt you. So even if you want to boast in your nationality, which Paul the Apostle himself said, I'm a Benjamite of the Benjamites, circumcised on the eighth day. I count it all dung, but for the excellency of Christ. Yes, there will be a place of Israel in the kingdom, but not with this anger and hatred that I don't know if you have inside of your heart. The difference will be is that not all people that call themselves Israel will enter in. Only those who are born again. And those who are born again have dropped their anger and their hatred and they have embraced the mercy and love of Christ. So even those who will be serving, because we will be serving one another, doesn't matter what position you have, whether you're a manager or the entry level worker, we're all servants to the Almighty Father. So I have no problem with you wanting to say, I want to be on the top because Jesus being on the top became the servant of all. And that's the example everyone who is an Israelite should follow the servant of them all was the highest of them all and so at the end of the day listen to me listen to me this is the problem the problem is is that 
because we are all proven under sin, no one has a right to boast before the Lord. Nobody. Every. Okay, listen. Whether you, whether. Okay, you know what? I don't interrupt you. I'll, I'll give it to you. I have no problem. Okay, I will. I, let me finish what I what I got to say. I'll give it to you. You can have your right to speak. You can be proven sin by the law or by your conscience, accusing or excusing. This is what the word of the Lord says, according to Romans 1 and 2. So some had the law and they were convicted. They will be judged according to the law. Some will be judged according to their conscience, which serves as a law. Because the laws of God are written in all of our hearts. We were all made in the image of God, whether you're Jew or Gentile. And everyone will stand before God and give an account of their lives. So at the end of the day, you need to be humble and know, listen, God will have a position for you. If you're born again and you drop the hatred, drop the anger, God has a position for you. And you will rule and reign with Christ. But you know, back to the servants. The servants of the Lord, according to Joel 2.28, they will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. As it says in Joel 2.28, and I will read, and you know the verse, it says, I will pour out my spirit even upon my handmaidens and my servants. So anyone that is in the kingdom will have the Holy Ghost, including those who are not national Israel, which is where we get Romans chapter 11, that some will be broken off and some will be grafted in by faith. You can't excuse this. So yes, there is a place for Israel. I 100% agree. No one's arguing with you in that. The difference is, is that there will be no sin in the kingdom. There will be no murderous hearts in the kingdom. There will be no resentment and vengeance. All of that will be done away with and was done away with on the cross for those who are born again. And that's why we preach the gospel, the good news to all people of all nations. Now, there are many places where even um, uh, there's a place where it talks about Egypt, my people, or, or um, I believe it was Egypt, my people. So these are not national Israelites. Any person can be called his people that graft in or join in with the house of Israel. There will be different uh, uh, gifts, 100%. That's not my problem. I'm here to preach the gospel. So I go back again to what I'm saying. The gospel I preach, the Jesus I preach, is the Jesus that came first to his own people, the people of Israel, the people of Judah, to whom the covenants belong, and told his disciples to go into all the world and preach the gospel to all nations. And, and, and in that last day, there will be every nation, kindred, and tongue from every clan of the, the planet of the earth worshiping before the Lord because he is the Lord. And our God is good. Isaiah 56, which you probably know very well. Sometimes people might dismiss what John actually saw with his right in a book. Right in a book. And send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, and unto Laodicea, verse 12. And I turn to see the... Because you take someone's identity, you take their power. What John saw, read what John saw again. Revelation chapter 1, verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool. Wool. That's what John saw. Not every black man has white hair. When I look at you, you got black woolly hair. So my question would be to the world, why put up a white European image? And I know it might make some of us feel uncomfortable. I know it might make some of us feel uncomfortable. But, but if you get an image, you also get a doctrine. Now, you might not have the image, but you have the doctrine. Now, does the Jesus you have teach this? Give me Revelation 13 and 9. Okay, but wait, 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 but let's finish the descriptions. Revelation chapter 1 verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire. Now, precept must be upon precept. Give me, uh... His eyes were flame like fire because he drank wine in moderation. Come on, man. You're added to the word, bro. <laughs> no. The Bible, precept of my precept. Give me Genesis 49 12. I'll prove it through the Bible. Not my words. Genesis chapter 49, verse 12. His eyes shall be red with wine. His eyes shall be red with wine. And his teeth white with milk. 
Jesus did was turning water to wine, right? Back to Revelation chapter uh, 1 verse 14. Revelation chapter 1 verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass. So his eyes were like a flame of fire, and you're just tying that in with that verse. Well, that, that, that could be referring to the fact. Hold on, you're assuming... Let me let me finish. Let me finish. Well, precept, we know that they called him a wine bibber. I have no dip. I, I don't disagree with you that he drank wine. I agree with you in moderation. But his eyes like a flame of fire means he's holy because our our God is a consuming fire. That is the precept. I didn't interrupt you. And, and I'm telling you, his uh, he is a consuming fire. I understand that. But I just showed you through the precept why his eyes Moses would have. Moses seen him. Moses gave you a precept. Now, if you accept it or not, that's not my issue. Hold on, hold on. Right. Right. And you precept that with Genesis 49 and 12. Now, hold on. Real quick, give me Revelations uh, 13 and 9. It says here his. Well, wait, wait a second. You said you use a precept that his, his eyes were red because of wine but the word says his eyes were as a flame of fire as, okay. now is fire red or is it orange I, I didn't interrupt you now the bible just said his hair was white like wool it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't it was white in color it says his head and his hairs does that mean he's a white man hold on it also said his feet because when you submit to a higher power, the first thing you do is get to your knees. And if I take your shoes off and your socks off, your feet going to be the same color as your face. So if John is looking at his feet in submission to the Mashiach, and he sees that his feet are as the color of brass, what color is brass? It's brown. He said he was so brown, he looked like he was burned. In a furnace. Now we can't get away from the past. Wait, wait, wait. Just, just wait. Just stick because it says his head and his hairs were white. Wait, hold on, hold on. His head and his hair. Now I don't believe Jesus was white. Okay. Let, let's just, just his head. No, no, no. He didn't say his head on his beard. You're adding words. Okay. Look. It's, wait. Just, just listen, man. I mean, just cut me off. I was almost done. Okay, because you're, you, okay, can I, okay, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, the hair on his head and the hair on his face, because the Bible speaks in Isaiah that they ripped out his beard. So he had hair on his chin and he had hair on his head. The hair on his head was white like wool. Hair on his head, as wool. His eyes were as a flame, as a flame, as a flame of fire. His feet were like unto fine brass as if they burned in a furnace. Now, again, give me Revelation 13 and 9 where I was going and I'm almost done, Pastor. Now, the Jesus that I hear y'all preaching with repent, all that's good. But you should have up there on the repent, you should also have Revelation 13 and 9 up there too. Read that real quick. Revelation chapter 13 verse 9. If any man have an ear, let him hear. Say what? If, any man, if any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Okay. The ones who lead into captivity shall go into captivity. Okay. Who led us into captivity? You reap what you sow. Vengeance is the Lord's. Now, if that's what we're preaching, we also shall have what Jesus spoke of Revelations 13 and 9. I have two more precepts and I'm done. Give me uh, give me Isaiah 28, 13. Because my question to you, Pastor, is who taught you the Bible? Was it a divine revelation? Or you learned it from the one who or you learned it from your predecessor or the one who came before you? Read that real quick. Isaiah chapter 28, verse 13. But the word of the Lord was unto them, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, Line upon line, line upon line. Here a little and there a little. That they might go and fall backward and be broken and snared and taken. Isaiah chapter 29 verse 13. Wherefore the Lord said, 
For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth. See, 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 that's why I had to cut you off earlier. Because you was worshiping the Most High with your mouth. Not with the oracles. You was ranting. There was no reader. You didn't have your phone out then. You were just ranting on things that you remember. You were just regurgitating what you learned from your uh, brothers or father. In you asked me where I learned my things. Well, I actually, you said no, sir. Right. So don't assume that I learned it here or there. So, so back to my ranting. If you read the preaching of the Apostle Paul, who even quoted that I can see that you have an altar up to uh, an unknown God. And he quoted secular uh, poets and saying, I know that you are uh, children of God. And he was speaking to Gentiles. OK, um, he wasn't quoting scripture when he said that, but we wouldn't call it ranting. He's preaching. Now, maybe you don't Alex accept Wood, that Alex kind because I could say you're ranting Alex, right now. Alex Wood, explain. No, Paul wasn't ranting. Paul was under the unction of the Holy Spirit. Even in 1 Corinthians, Paul speaks and says, this is, I speak this uh, by permission. How you put that? I don't want to misinterpret it. Right, you know what I'm saying? So, so I agree with you. There are many things that Paul spoke that wasn't Old Testament Torah or Tanakh. But the Most High upheld it as scripture. He's not treated the same way he did Paul. Paul wrote 13 books of the New Testament. How many have we wrote? So when we read and interpret it, the Bible tells us, first of all, in 1 Thessalonians 5 and 21 to prove all things. He also says in 1 Peter 4 and 11, um, if any man speak, he must speak according to the orders of the Most High. Now, as he was reading in Isaiah 29 13, we have learned to fear God by the precepts or the laws of men. So that's why I ask you, Pastor, who I love, I love you, brother. That's why I had to ask you, because I was in the same boat. Who did you learn the gospel from? From the word of God itself. Okay, hey. hold on. Okay, so you're saying what you're saying, because the Bible speaks, he said. And the Holy Ghost, moving me and leading me and I'm teaching me each day, guiding me into all now, truth. Now what it sounds like, it sounds like what you did, what I did. I was uh, um, uh, familiar with a few precepts, and I was very excited about being saved. And I began to go watch videos about T.D. Jake's great preachers. And I wanted to be like them. Hold on. Wasn't me. Now, hold, on, hold, on, hold, on, hold on. Hold on. Now, either you learn from divine, because either the foolish things of the world are sent to conform the wise. Now, you have to be honest. The gospel you are teaching, the gospel that brings the whole world real quick, and I'm done. Jeremiah 31, 31, and Hebrews 8 and 8, and I'm done. Because this is going to prove that you're preaching. You said that before, though. You said you were I done a long you. time ago. I promise, <laughs> I promise you. Two more. Don't three. lie, though. I'm not. Two more, and I'm done. I'm going to sit back. This is going to prove that you're teaching and preaching another gospel. Go ahead, go ahead. Read Jeremiah 31, 31. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 31. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make a new covenant. A what? A new covenant. With the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Okay, read. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which my covenant they break, although I was an husband unto them, saith the Lord. Verse 33. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts. And will be their God, and they shall be my people. Now, now, nowhere, okay, now nowhere, nowhere did it just speak of no other nationality, no other people. It nowhere it just mentioned anybody else, Pastor. It mentioned the Israelites, Northern Kingdom and Southern Kingdom. If we learn the history, we understand why that nation of Israel broke up. Now, give me Hebrews 8 and 8. And I'm done. I'm done after this. Go ahead, read that. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 8. For finding fault with them, he saith. Now, this is New Testament. This is New Testament. This is New Covenant. Now, you will have to prove to me, when, I, when I'm done, you have to prove to me that the New Covenant has been given 
to the whole world of anybody who wants to come in. It's been given to them. Read it again. Hebrews chapter 8 verse 8. For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel. 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 With the house of Israel. With the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers. In Hebrews chapter 8 verse 9 from the top Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers In the day when I took them by the hand To lead them out of the land of Egypt Because they continued not in my covenant And I regarded them not saith the Lord Verse 10 For this is the covenant that I will make With the house of Israel That I will make with the house of Israel After those days saith the Lord I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts. I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts. And I will be to them a God and they shall be to me a people. Wonderful. So he would make a new covenant with his people. So it's a progressive revelation. We see in the new covenant more to the story. And I'm going to read that. Okay. So Romans, uh, hold on a second. Romans chapter nine, verses 30 says this. What shall we say then? That the Gentiles which followed not after righteousness have obtained righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith. But Israel which followed after the law of righteousness. So who is he speaking of here when it says that Israel followed after the law of righteousness? The southern kingdom. Just the southern kingdom. So now you're taking Judah and making it Israel now. Uh, Ezekiel 37, entirety. He told Ezekiel, take two sticks, put one on Judah, the other one on Ephraim. He says, join them back together. That's the whole mystery that the angels want to look into. The prophets want to understand the great mystery of God. It was putting two nations who were once enemies under the rulership of Solomon and his two sons, Jeroboam and Rehoboam, to put them back together again. That's the whole dry bones. Hold on to our bones, Ezekiel. That is the whole nation of Israel. So when you're reading the precept about this southern kingdom, Hayden or the Jews, because when you say Jews, we don't say Jew, we say Israelites. When you say Jews, you're only mentioning three tribes. Three. Peter was given uh, which, which three are you mentioning? Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. So when they say Israel, who is he mentioning? Now when the northern kingdom. So okay. you, oh wait, wait. In, in one precept you might see I love Israel and I love Judah You might see I give my laws to Israel And my laws to Jerusalem Because we know David was from the tribe of Judah You see what I'm saying So you might find that in scriptures To let you know that there are two nations That he's going to join back together Now when you read Ezekiel um, let's, not, you know, let's, not, or let's not go all over the place And let's lose the point no, 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 no. I'm right here where you are when you go to Ezekiel 21 and 31, I think, it reads, the northern kingdom, who was conquered by the Assyrians, they say, they told Most High God, we're going to be just like the heathen. We're going to go and serve wood and stone just like the heathen. So, he, so when Christ comes in New Testament, Peter is given commission to go and bring in Judah, or the southern kingdom. Paul has the biggest job. Paul has to go out into the other nations to get the Gentiles. James 1 and 1 proves who the Gentiles are. The strangers that are scattered abroad. Greetings. Okay, so again, back to what I was saying. So when he's talking about, but Israel which followed after the law of righteousness has not obtained the law of righteousness. Who is he speaking of? Is he speaking of Israel as a collective? Or is he speaking of northern Israel? Or is he speaking of Judah? I, I'm just asking you the question. Okay. Wherefore, because they sought it not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law, for they stumbled at the stumbling stone, as it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling and rock of offense. Whoever believes on him shall not be ashamed. That's the entirety of the chapter. 
Oh, you want me to read the entire chapter? Okay. We can do that. But not the whole chapter, but this is... Okay, okay. Let, let, me, let me start. That I have great heaviness, continually sorrow my heart. Uh... I say the truth in Christ. I lie not, my conscience also bearing me witness of the Holy Ghost, that I have great heaviness and sorrow in my heart, for I could wish that myself were a curse for Christ, from Christ, for my brethren, my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, flesh, who are Israelites, that's his kinsmen, according to the flesh. I, I, I do too, I don't know what you're laughing at. I love it too, I love it too. I, to whom pertains the adoption, okay. the glory, and the covenants, and the giving of the law, and the service of God, and the promises. So we, read that in we already read that. No one, no one can. Yeah, the only problem is, is that you seem to be missing a lot of other verses out there. So we're going to clear that up. It says here, whose are the fathers, and of whom are as concerning the flesh. I love that when he says concerning the flesh. Christ came. Why did Christ come? To, no, to save his people. No, no, why did he, he, he just told you why he came? Okay, why, why didn't you just share? Let me just get back to my point. No, 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 no. Okay, no, no, I don't, I don't mind, no, brother. No, Go no, say no, what no. you got to say. Say whatever you got to say. I'm not running. So right to his grave. What, what do you want me to see? Why did Christ come? Who is all? To, to save his people. That's what we're, the people of Israel. So did he come from Israel? In extension, yes. No, Anyone no, no. who would believe on it. Okay. It, it, Okay, you want me to read the whole thing? No, no, no. Because I just proved oh, later on. I cut you. You didn't just read that. You didn't read other nations. You read Israel. Bro, I already admitted to you Why? that he came for Israel a long time ago. And then I said he told his disciples to go into all nations. So, so nobody's, nobody. Listen, listen, man. No, it's not a contradiction. It's just that you can't wrap your head around the fullness of the gospel. That's the problem. And it says here. As concerning the flesh, Christ came, who is over all, over all, all, God, over all, God bless forever. So you, you think God is not over the Gentiles? No, I actually, I know. Good, so why are you laughing though? He's over all. Christ is Lord over all. Every knee is going to bow. So then what, what's the contradiction? But why did Christ come to the earth? I, to redeem all mankind that would believe on him. But, okay, let me finish. Let me, okay, sir, sir, sir. Let, come on. Are you serious? Are you serious right now? Okay, let, 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 let me finish. You wanted me to read all of this, right? Do you want me to finish or no? Or you just, just don't want me to read? Not as though the word of God has taken none effect for they are not all Israel which are Israel so just to clear it up is he referring to Israel as a collective or is he referring to the northern tribes right now Israel as a collective yes. okay I agree with you good for they are not all Israel which are Israel neither because they are the seed of Abraham are they all children you know why one how many children and wives did Abraham have at least from scripture three that we see probably more okay now now did isaac no did isaac have two sons whose name was changed to israel jacob that's what he's speaking about israel. okay so because the seed the promise was only given to whom I, i'm not following you right okay. was the promise given to ishmael so so you're saying that the seed of not everyone that's the seed of Israel is Israel. Because the promise was given to the freeborn child, not the slave child. So it's, it's taking you right back to Genesis, Pastor. So everybody who come from Abraham is not of that lineage, of that seed. And he made it clear. He says, no, even Sarah was like, no, uh, lay down with Hagar. No, he said, no, you don't have a baby. I got you, but but but, but I, I want to. I, I just a really question, right? So it's saying that not all that are the seed of Israel. But I'll just read it. Um, for they are not all Israel, which are Israel. Okay, so what does that mean to you? I, I'm... That's the actual seed of Israel. So not all right. Who the, 
Okay, okay, real quick. This, this, this is not even the point, it's a sideline point. I want, I want to just... Sideline point is, when you begin to read on down, he's going to mention Esau. Esau came from Israel. Israel used to be Jacob. Jacob wrestled with an angel. His name was changed to Israel. I got you, I got you. Everybody that comes from Israel, because he had many wives, many children. I got you. But the promise was given to who? Okay, I, I understand where you're coming from now. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so, but in Isaac shall your seed be called. Okay. That is, they which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God. But the children of the promise are counted for the seed. Okay, okay, bro, we can stop at every point, but... Okay, go ahead. Okay, the children of God are the children according to the promise, right? So we're still dealing with lineage. That's why I started off and said, God says in Jeremiah 33 and 5, that if these ordinances pass from me, then Israel shall not be a nation no more. He's proven it. So the promise still stands through the seed. So the children of God, these who are not the children of God, like Ishmael, the other nations, the Chinese, Europeans, he just said these are not the children of God. But the children of the promise are accounted for the seed, Pastor. This is very cool. Okay, so let, let's continue. Because I want to get to my point. For this is the word of the promise. And this time will come and Sarah will have a son. And not only this, but when Rebecca also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac, for the children being not yet born, neither have done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calls. It was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger, as it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. What shall we... Oh, hold, on, hold on, I get you, that's an easy point. Why does God hate Esau? Because he sold his brother uh, when he was trying to get help and plus he traded his birthright but what shall we say then is there unrighteousness to God God forbid for he says to Moses I will have mercy on whom I have mercy and compassion on whom I have compassion so then it is not of him that wills nor of him that runs but of God that shows mercy for the scripture says unto Pharaoh even for the same purpose have I raised you up that I might show my power unto you and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth therefore has he mercy on whom he has mercy and whom he hardens he hardens that will say that why does god find fault for who has resisted his will no but oh man who art thou that replies against god shall the things say form say to him that formed it why have you made me thus has not the potter power of the clay in the same lump made one vessel unto honor and the other to dishonor what if okay okay it's very important okay just what if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction, and that he might make known the riches of his glories on the vessels of mercy which he had prepared unto glory, even us whom he has called not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. Okay, so now he's getting into, he's using metaphors comparing Esau and Jacob, now he's going to Jews and Gentiles, as he also says in Hosea. Well, that's important. You can't run past that. Go ahead. Because as he says in Hosea, what did Hosea say? Go to I will call them my people, which were not my people, and her beloved, which was not my beloved. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, you are not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living God. Isaiah also cries concerning Israel. Though the number of the children of Israel will be the sand of the sea, only a remnant will be saved. For he will finish the work and cut in short in righteousness, because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. And as Isaiah said before, except the Lord Sabaoth had left us a seed, we had been of Sodom and been made like Amar. What shall we say then? Okay, so he's using these as metaphors, and he's taking parts of scripture to prove a new point. That's what you're missing, and I know where you're going to try to go. What shall we say then? That the Gentiles which followed not after righteousness. Now we got to stop because you said earlier on that this is referring to all of Israel. We know that all of Israel followed after righteousness. So even those, not all of Israel followed after righteousness at one point. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. I'm talking about one point because all of Israel were there at the covenant. All of Israel were there at the covenant. 
Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 32. And that which cometh into your mind shall not be at all that you say. We will be as the heathen, as the heathen, as the families of the countries to serve wood and stone. Of Romans chapter 9. Okay, wait a second. The Gentiles, because by definition, Pastor, a Gentile or a Hellenistic or a, a, a if you want to go into the Greek, we can look at the Hellenistes. We can look at all of those. And, it, and, and what you're saying is false. These are Israelites by nation. But Greeks by... Where they live. Where they right, live. right. So just like me, I'm a, a so-called African-American. But by nation, I'm an Israelite. This is who Paul was coming out there. Okay, so let me... You, you, that verse still didn't prove what I was disprove what I was saying because 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 what I'm saying here is that without putting words into Paul's mouth you already agreed that he's speaking of all of Israel he said Israel which followed after the law of righteousness has not attained to the law of righteousness you already admitted that it's referring to all the 12 tribes now Israel at one point I'm not talking about in their failures all 12 tribes at one point were present at the altar before Moses they received the covenant they were supposed to practice the law. Now, you also said in Deuteronomy 28 that all of Israel went into captivity. So at one point, they were under the law. They followed after rights, but they disobeyed the law, which is why the curses came upon them, which it says very clearly here in, in this verse. It says, Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, has not obtained to the law of righteousness. The Gentiles which followed not after righteousness have obtained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith. That's where we get the promise. All you need to do is an easy, simple word word selection in the New Testament. Wait, hold on a second. The promise, hold on. We just read that Israel followed after the law, but they were went under the curse. The Gentiles received the righteousness which is by faith. And it says, wherefore, because they sought it not by faith, but as it were of the works of the law, they stumbled at the stumbling stone. As it is written, behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone. Now I'm going to read another verse because I listened to you very carefully. Paul the Apostle said in Acts chapter 9 verses 15. But the Lord said unto him, go your way for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles. Acts 9 15. Before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. So the name will be bore before the kings. These are Gentile kings. Before the Gentiles, we're assuming it's referring to not the nations of Israel, but the rest of the world. His name will be bore. And that lines up according to the precepts of Jesus, who said, preach the word in all nations. So when you say that he's preaching the word in all nations, that's only Israel, is not according to what Jesus called Paul the apostle to do. To bear his name before the Gentiles, the kings, and the children of Israel. Precept upon precept. Now, we see here... We see in the word of the Lord, it says here in Deuteronomy 23 and 3, the Ammonite and the Moabite shall not enter the congregation of the Lord, even to the 10th generation shall they not enter into the Lord. And it goes on about the Edomite as well um, later on in the verse. And it says here, hold on, it says here, hold on, it says, you shall not abhor the Edomite for he is your brother. You shall not abhor an Egyptian because you are a stranger in the land. The children that are begotten of them shall enter into the congregation of the Lord in the third generation. So, I'm ranting by quoting scripture now. Okay. Well, let me finish now because you said you're done. So either you're a man of your word or you're not. So let me say my words, okay? You had your words, let me say mine. I'm, I'm listening to your words. No, no, no. I, I'm not. Look. You said you were done, but you're not keeping your words. Now you're ranting. I'm answering the questions. I'm pre I'm the preacher, bro. You said you're not. Look, look, I listened to you, though. You said you were done. So, so you said you were done, so let me finish. But you said you're done, though. Who's about? No, we're not talking about either. My, I'm just showing you something. Show me the new okay, okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so let me go back to what I was saying, okay? So it says here um, in Ephesians chapter 3, and I'll read it for you. It says here in Ephesians chapter 3, 
Because you read your scriptures and now it's time to read mine. It says in Ephesians chapter 3. And I'll read, I'll read, this is the new covenant. Yes, it's, it's new, called the New Testament, the King James Bible that you hold. It says, for this cause, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles. Now, we already read what Paul said. He was given the mandate to bear his name before the children of Israel, the Gentiles, and the kings. Okay, let's go back since you said I'm adding. It says here in Acts chapter 9, 15, and the Lord said unto him, the Lord, who, who is the Lord? How am I adding? Let me read what the scripture says. How am I adding? I'll read word for word, line upon line. Let me read what it says. But the Lord, who is the Lord? I'm asking you who the Lord is that we're talking about. Okay, fine, I won't ask you. But the Lord said unto him, Go your way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me. And it says... To bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. Listen very carefully. Those are three groups of people. The children. Okay, can someone explain to me how I'm adding when I read it literally? Someone read Hebrews 8 and 8. No, no. Can, can someone just tell me how am I adding to this verse when I'm reading it literally? Because you're taking that precept and trying to make it look like. It goes with Hebrews 8 and 8. Hebrews 8 and 8 says, Clearly, my new covenant is only with the nation of Israel. Not according to what I did for their father. Now, show me... Hebrews, Israel, let's go to Hebrews 8 and 8. Let, let, I, I, let, okay, for those watching right now, you heard what he just said. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 8 and 8. Show me but you did say you were done, and I was going to read Ephesians chapter 3. And I just read Acts chapter 9. Okay, then let me misinterpret and prove my point, and then you can disagree after. How about that? Because you, I listen to you. I respectfully. It says, for this cause, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, to you Gentiles. And so I'm going to share what I shared, Acts chapter 9. Jesus said, the Lord said, he will bear my name before the Gentiles, the kings, and the children of Israel. So now he's the prisoner of the Jesus Christ for you Gentiles, speaking to them. If you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given to me toward you, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote a four in a few words, whereby when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of man, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit, by the Spirit, that the Gentile should be fellow heirs. One, one, one second. I'll come in back. Check, 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 check. So this mystery that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs. Now, Israel is already a heir. All the 12 tribes are already heirs. So being a fellow heir, whether the 10 tribes or the southern tribes, they are already hairs. So that is not the mystery. That is already a fact. But the mystery is that the Gentiles should be fellow hairs, and this is a, and of the same body. Now we already know Israel is already of the same body. So this is speaking of another group. And partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel, whereof I am made a minister according to the gift of grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Unto me who am less than the least of the saints is the grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles. What did Jesus say? Bear my name before the Gentiles, the kings, and the children of Israel. That I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery. Now we already know Israel is in fellowship. Whether a broken fellowship or not, they're children of the promise. But these new people, these Gentiles, as Jesus said, preach to the, bear my name to the kings, the Gentiles, and Israel. That I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world has been hidden God, who created all things by Jesus Christ, to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God 
according to the eternal promise, which is purpose in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. Wherefore I desire that you faint not at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. And so this is what I wanted to share with you, brother, um, as well as one more passage, that, and I can close. And if you want a rebuttal, if you want to share, I, you can share, which is not a problem. Uh, Galatians chapter 3 and, and 14 says that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit by faith. And just to go into a little uh, of the side drop of that verse, which is the scripture, it says here, and you quoted this verse uh, earlier on in the beginning, it says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Now, the promise of the Spirit is through faith, not the law, but by faith. Just as Melchizedek came, just as Abraham came before the law, it is through faith. And this is the point of the book of Galatians, that there was a promise that came before the law. The law was given to Moses for the people of Israel. But grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. And the promise was before the law to all nations that would believe by faith. And this is the Jesus that I preach. The Jesus that anybody that has faith and is born again can be saved. The sad thing is, is that we assume genealogies where people don't even know their father's father's father or even their father's father father father. They assume that there is no other bloodline in their bloodline. You accept it by faith, assuming that because you have darker skin or that some of your ancestors or you are in a community or some of your ancestors have gone through the slave trade, not knowing whether it was an African free man that came along and had you or even a white man came from Europe and is in your DNA. You see different skin tones with him and him. We don't even fully know. I do know that Israel exists and I do know if God has called you and revealed that to you. Amen. Because God has a purpose. But to assume, to assume that all of Israel went that route is unbiblical. Because you didn't say, good, I'm glad you didn't say that. You said a two couple of different things. Israel has been scattered to the four corners of the earth. And the truth of the matter is, because of race mixing, there still is a line within all of these other nations. You are. Good. And you don't even know who's who in these days. But those who, he knows. But those who receive the promise by faith and are born again, you should wait until the end, until God reveals all things. And those, listen, those who are preaching the word of God and are born again amongst these people of every nation, you don't know who they are. And so what you need to do is just be humble. One thing I am going to say, regardless of the people that have national Israel, it's very, very clear over and over in the scripture. Just like he said to the Philippian jailer. Do you believe the Philippian jailer was a Hebrew? Well, on the Hebrews and Gentiles, I want to prove one precept. Wait, wait, just, just Acts chapter 16, 31. When the Philippian jailer said, Sir, what must I do to be saved? Was he a Hebrew? Well, in that, well, in that case, you would say uh, uh, that Cornelius the centurion uh, was a Roman. See, I don't want to hop and dance anywhere. Well, just a quick question, and then, and then we can move on. Because um, uh, where it says here... Uh, uh, the jailer was standing and and when he asked Paul in in in, uh, in, in Acts chapter 31 they said but it's Acts chapter 30 and brought them out and said sir what must I do to be saved who was he was a jailer of Paul and Silas was he was he I just want to know from you was he a Hebrew or not I'll, I'll answer your question with a question. If, if I take a walk down to 201 Poplar, there's more, uh, there are different nationalities of jailers at 201 Poplar. So they're just not Americans <laughs> at, at 201 Poplar as jailers. 
There are so-called African Americans, so-called Latinos, and they're the Indians holding different positions. Colin Powell was the, uh, uh, I think he was the- uh, Secretary of Defense. Right, Secretary of Defense, and he was from Jamaica. So that is irrelevant. This, is, this here is relevant. Right, so you're assuming he was a Hebrew? If he's gonna be saved. Gonna so you, all, you only- Salvation, salvation. Oh, give me Isaiah, let me prove it. Let me prove it. Isaiah 45, 17, and then give me John 8, 35. And I'm done. Just to prove Gentile. Just to prove salvation and then to prove Gentile. To prove salvation and prove Gentile. Read that. Isaiah chapter 45, verse 17. But Israel shall be but Israel shall be saved in the Lord with everybody. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed. Nor confounded world without end. The world of Israel. So just because, okay, wait, wait a second, man. Before people skip this point, just because it says Israel be saved, you're adding the assumption that, no, no. Because God said Israel be saved, he didn't say anyone else won't be saved. You're assuming that. No, 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 no. It said Israel will be saved. Not all of Israel, by the way. So if you, wait, hold on a second. Listen, you gotta listen to me, man. It says Israel will be saved. Now, if I just read in my own understanding of that, I can say, well, all Israel will be saved, but it doesn't say all Israel will be saved. Israel. Now, which Israel? The remnant of Israel. Now, it doesn't say in that verse, no one else will be saved. It says Israel will be saved. In that context, okay, Israel will be saved. But it, do but it doesn't prove your point. If you, if, if you can see another group, uh, verse that says someone else won't be saved, then I will say, okay, you know what? No one else will be saved. But that's not what it says. St. John chapter 4, verse 22. Oh, yeah. Ye worship, you know not what. We worship what you don't know. Oh, yeah. We know what we worship. We know what we worship. For salvation is of the Jews. Salvation has always been of the Jews. Of the Jews. Right. Jews. For who? That there will be a light unto the Gentiles. Amen. Hold on. Amen. Hold on. Hold on. You don't understand Gentiles. Let me give you Gentiles and we have to go. No, I don't understand no, Gentiles. No, no, don't, don't no. take me as a fool. Let, okay. Let me give you the Bible's interpretation of Gentile nations. And there's yeah. other, sometimes Israel's referred to no, nations. We don't no have problem. to even no, 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 go no, no, through that point. No problem, no problem, no problem. You said Gentiles a lot tonight. Now, I'm telling you, the Gentiles of the, the Bible that Paul had to go to was these so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Let me prove it. Get James 1 and 1. Hispanics, Hispanics from Spain? Now, hold on. Now, just listen. Who was James writing to? All nations? Yes, he was, but the scattered ones in those nations. Read that. James chapter 1, verse 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes. Oh, stop. Read again. To the 12 tribes uh -huh. okay. which are scattered abroad. Uh -huh. Greeting. So, what does that say to you? Wait, wait, wait. The letter of James, because all these are letters, the letter of James was only written to the 12 tribes who were scattered abroad. Greetings. Give me one more. Give me Jesus. Give me John 8 and 35. St. John chapter 7, verse 35. Now, these are the apostles. They were wondering, where, where is Jesus? Where are you going? Where is Jesus at? Let's find out where Jesus was. I want you to interpret that, interpret this for me. Come on. St. John chapter 7, verse 35. Then said the Jews among themselves, uh, Whither will he go? Whither will he go? Where are he going? That we shall not find him. That we shall not find him. Will he go into the dispersed among the Gentiles? Oh, stop. And shall he go among the dispersed among the Gentiles? So what, that does, oh, go. And teach the Gentiles? Now, there are two types of Gentiles in that passage. There are the dispersed Gentiles, and there are the Gentiles that he's going among. Read it again for him. And you take what it means. Sure. Go ahead. St. John chapter 7, verse 35. Then said the Jews among themselves, Whither will he go that we shall not find him? Will he go into the dispersed among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles? To go into the dispersed amongst the Gentiles means they're living amongst the Gentiles. So, right. so, so they were they assuming. Who, no, they, no. They, no, no, no. Israelites were living amongst the Gentiles. Right. We, we know who that. Who did they think? Ask me, come on now. Who did the disciples think? Christ was going to teach among the Gentiles. The Jews among the Gentiles. Okay. 
So the Gentile you're speaking of in Ephesians and Galatians, matter of fact, give me Galatians real quick. Uh, all our fathers. So you want to use that as a precept for, no, 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 no. for Galatians. Galatians 3. But you don't want to actually say the words that Jesus said to Paul about who he should bear his name to, to the Gentiles, to the kings, and to the Israelites. Because the kings are, were Gentiles, right? Unless you unless you mean he's going to be speaking to the kings that are Hebrews. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant how that all our fathers... Oh, now, I want you to tell me who Paul was speaking to. Okay, read it again. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers, oh, who? our fathers, oh, were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. Now, who is Paul speaking to? The people of Israel. Right. Now... Who is that now? As you begin to read on down, he's speaking about salvation. He's speaking about coming back into their own covenant. Speaking about their fathers. Now, at what time did other nations ever go through the cloud or go They, they didn't the go cloud? through the cloud. Right. So who is maybe the mixed multitude? So who is First Corinthians chapter ten? Now, now we're not denying that other nations won't claim to us. We agree with you on that. We agree that when Israel first came out of Egypt. Israel came out and other nations. But at Mount Sinai, the covenant was made to Israel. We know this. Okay. So we're not denying that other nations won't be there. All we're saying is, just like in this kingdom, there's a hierarchy, right? There's a high class, a middle class, and a low class, right? Christ gonna be the same thing in the kingdom. You he says. The law should not pass away. If you don't teach the law, you shall be called the what in the kingdom? The least. The least in the kingdom. If you keep the law, you'll be called the what in the kingdom? The greatest. The greatest. So it proves there is a hierarchy in the kingdom of God. Okay, can I, can I say something to you? You, you? you see this world, right? You see Jesus who came from heaven to earth. Okay? The word became flesh. The highest of the high became the lowest of low to redeem man. Amen. The purpose of, of people that know the Lord is to be redemptive like their father, Amen. redemptive like the son. So we go and we lift up the broken. Now, if you think that in, in the kingdom, there's going to be corrupt uh, behaviors in the heart of his people. You can't God most high. Right. So, so even though, even if there will be people that are low, they will be brothers even with the high. I agree with you. So it... Glorying over over something is, is pointless at this moment because because at the end of okay if, if you wanna if you wanna glory in that amen if that helps you but but this is what I want to say to you in Acts chapter two it says in in verses uh, five Iraq uh, we're talking about when the Jews first received the gospel it says here. Um, in verses 5 And they were d dwelling at Jerusalem Jews Devout men Out of every nation uh -huh. Every nation right, Under read. heaven Now when there was noise abroad The multitude came together So the key verse is Jews devout men out of every nation Jews devout okay. men Out of every nation Jews out of Okay, every nation. Out of every nation Jews. Okay listen right. Listen carefully Right, sure. right. You agree Okay, and we know that sometimes Jews is used as a reference to all of Israel. We know that. You'll agree. No. You, you don't think ever in the New Testament Jews is a reference no. to everybody? No. No. Okay. No, that's incorrect. Oh, okay. Okay. Because we'll, we'll Jew, disagree with that. Jew, Jew, Jew only stems from Judah. Okay. Judah was only one tribe. But we do know in the split, with David being king over Jerusalem... That Judah is the king tribe, which led Benjamin and Levi, some, some of Levi. Okay, so I just want you, just for the record, to say that you believe that there is no collective group of what it references Jews to refer to all Israel in the New Testament. Is that what you're saying? Again. I just want to make it no, clear no, no, for the record, because no, it's just on the record. I don't want, no, no, no. See, I don't play scripture. No, it's not about playing scripture. I just want to know. My statement, my statement is, when the Bible mentions a Jew, the 
Bible is mentioning Judah okay, by definition. Okay. Now, when you mention in Israel, normally it's meaning the northern kingdom. You cannot understand Jew and Israel without understanding the split that happened under King Solomon because of his sin with Bathsheba. So we can't have this discussion <clears throat> about Jews and all of them Israelites without understanding that history. Okay, no, I, I, I know the history and I understand that there was a split and there is a difference. But my question specifically, you're right in that in Judah, it no, it's not be. might be. It we we got to know this. Okay, no problem. Okay. Okay, you give it to me. Okay, so let's, so, so there are times when Israel, like you said earlier, is a collective of the 12 tribes. No problem. You admitted that earlier. No problem. And there's times when Jews are referring to collective of all the 12 no tribes. No problem. Okay, you agree? No problem. Not, not gonna, no problem. You agree? No problem. Go ahead. Yeah, yes and yes, no and no. Yes or yes, no come or no. On, brother. Is it a yes or is it a no? Oh, come on. I made my statement. Yes. Let your yes be yes. You know. Right. Good. It depends on the scripture and the content. So just a yes or yes, no or no. Wait, wait. Admit it. What's so hard to What's so hard to admit it? Why are you doing this, man? Why are you doing this? Yes or no? Yes or no? So why? 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 Let's, let's let the truth. I'm not afraid of the truth. I'm not afraid to have any discussion with anybody. Let the truth be right. Let man be a lie. Let God be true and every man a lie. And if, if something something I'm teaching you, then receive it. If something you're teaching me, I'll receive it. Absolutely. And we said it earlier. We said it earlier. So I have no so problem. Yes or, yes or no? I'll be wrong. I'll be wrong on camera. It's a live stream. Don't be political, okay. brother. Good. So is it? Is it? Are there times in the New Testament? Good. Okay. That's that was it. That was easy. Okay. So it said. And they were dwelling at Jerusalem. Hold on a second. Acts 2, 2 and 5. Devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue? wherein we were born, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and dwellers in Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, and Egypt, and in the parts of Libya, about Serene, and strangers of Rome, Jews, and proselytes. Strangers of Rome, okay, good. Strangers. So it goes right back. Let me finish. Come on, man. Strangers of Rome, Jews, and proselytes, Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our own tongues the wonderful works of God. So we see that places where Israel would have been scattered, you know, Persia, places of Rome, all throughout, of every nation. So Jews is referring to people of Israel in collective because these people were scattered in every nation. Every nation under the earth was there. Okay. And it speaks of a couple of groups, which you wanted to bring up one, and I can let you glory in that one, Strangers of Rome, okay? And proselytes, okay? So what would you say about those two verses? I mean, those two words, proselytes and strangers of Rome. So just for context, we're, we're getting Jews of every nation that's there. Hold on. Jews of every nation is there. And now we're getting to two other groups that seem strange. And I will let you, strangers of Roman proselytes. So, so by me knowing your position. What is my position? Me knowing your position. Your position is preaching the gospel to all nations. To get all nations in. In order for, Just answer this question. In order for me to answer your question. You have to answer John 8 35. Which is oh, right. come, on. No, no, no. come on. Come on. This is just jumping. Yeah. No, no, no. no, no. Answer, I know your position. You know mine. You think answer salvation is only for Israel. No, no, no. Answer the I just want you to understand. I just want you to interpret this one if verse. You interpret my verse. No, no. I'll do yours. My question was first. No, I read my first, right? No. no I just no, read that's not read true. First. That's not true. James 8 35. It's, it's, it's being recorded. It's being it's being recorded. James okay, I'll, okay. Just answer my question after. I'll go with your verse. Okay, what's your verse? James 8, 35. Read, read, read it again. <laughs> Who was Jesus going to? He was going to Israel, the lost sheep of the 
tribes of Israel, the house of Israel. That was Jesus' mission. It has nothing to do with this verse. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Jesus is on earth because I've been where you are. Okay. Now, what you're going to tell me is that somewhere in between Jesus and Paul, he changed his ministry. So if Jesus is going only to the Jews or Israel in John 8 and 35, what is Peter doing going to all nations? Well, oh, the, the answer is already in John chapter 1. No, no, hold on. Give me the answer, right? Bro, if Jesus don't change, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21 says, And he shall, and she shall bring forth a son, which shall save his people from their sins. Okay, so when you know that, Jesus is only going to the scattered Israelites. You're telling me, like every other pastor have, and I did it too. That in between Jesus and Paul, he changes the gospel. And now it's not only for Israel, not anybody can be saved. That's false doctrine. When did, okay, you have yet to show me a scripture that it says the gospel is only. You added the word only. Okay, it says, Acts, hold on, hold on, hold on. You just read that he came in, he, he, he came unto the lot, he, he came to lost, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Wonderful, that's true. Okay, that, that's not the issue. Listen, listen. God desires that none should perish, but all should come to repentance. Okay, well then, well then, okay, okay, wait, before we get off topic, okay, let's go back to my verse, because I answered your verse. You're going to keep jumping. Man, I went to John 8 out of politeness. I, I, I said, you know what? Even though I asked my question first, you wanted to jump in through another verse, John chapter 8. I went to John chapter 8, I said, if you let me go back to Acts chapter 2. Thank you, thank you. Okay. So again, strangers of Rome and proselytes. What's your answer? What does that mean? Those are Israelites. Okay, explain. Those are scattered Israelites. Okay, so the proselytes. First Peter chapter one, verse one. First John, first no James one and one. Israel or repentance only for Israel. Acts five and thirty one. On Acts two and twenty one, Jesus was taken away until until. Matter of fact, give me the precept real quick. Give me uh, Acts 5 and 31. And I'll prove what I'm saying. Acts 5 and 31. And then give me uh, Acts 2 and 21. Read that real quick. Acts chapter 5, verse 31. Him hath God exalted with his right hand. This is why I say, everybody in that verse you just read, it said even strangers around, it can only pertain to these people right here. Read that. Acts chapter 5 verse 31. Him have God exalted with his right hand That's right. to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel. Oh, to who? For to give repentance to Israel. Oh, everybody. Repentance to Israel. Oh, the whole world. Repentance to Israel Please. and forgiveness of sin. And forgiveness of sin. Now give me one more. Give me Acts 2 and 21. This is, this is easy stuff. This is simple. Is Israel now. So so we agree that Acts chapter 2, the Jews, no, we agree that the Jews are referring to collective Israel because we just heard a quote from about natural Israel. Seed. Natural, 12 tribes. Right. Good. They were from all nations, they were there. According to uh, according to Romans chapter 9. Okay. I agree. Okay. Of my flesh. Okay, fine, of the flesh. Acts chapter 1 verse 6 When they therefore were come together They asked of him saying Lord Will thou at this time restore again The kingdom to Israel now, The biggest thing on Peter's mind Was it everybody So what you're doing is Somewhere in between Jesus, Peter And Paul The gospel was changed No the same gospel Christ spoke Peter spoke Peter was only worried about what? Let's see what Peter was worried about. Was he worried about everybody getting saved? All generations getting saved and getting repentance? Let's see what Peter was worried about. No problem. In, in Acts chapter 6? Acts chapter 1 verse 6. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time 
restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Now, that's why when you go to Revelations 20, 21, 21, 22, the kingdom of heaven has 12 gates. Right, right. 12 gates for 12 tribes. Right. Now, we do understand other nations go, will be with the Israelites. Hence, Isaiah 14. Oh, there's a scripture that they'll go in and out. The scripture, Even the Gentiles. Uh, 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 right. Now, hold on. Now, you do understand how the temple was orchestrated, right? Yeah, right. Three, three ways. Right. There was an outer court for the Gentiles, for the heathens, and there was the inner court, and there was the Holy of Holies. But in the kingdom, there will not be no Holy of Holies, because God will be God over the whole nation of Israel, right? It never mentioned other nations. This is easy stuff. You have to search in order to bring in other nations. It's only speaking about the scattered children of God, which are your so-called blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans. Not, this is not racist, it's the truth. Okay, 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 so we covered some ground, Acts chapter two, we agreed from scripture that Jews, which is referring to collective Israel, 12 tribes of every nation were there. You said scattered of Rome and the proselytes are all referring to Hebrews. Okay, I, I I agree with you to a point, but this is what I you don't agree with. Okay, the the point I guess is is the proselyte one we can debate about. It could be it could be that somebody was adopting or getting back to the right forms of religion. Okay, that could be the proselyte. Okay, or 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 it could be like Achior in Judith that was of another nation who became a Jew. So, you know that verse, good. So, it could be someone of another nation, which would defeat your point already. But the point I'm trying to make here is this, because we don't, we, we don't know. We don't know. All it says is proselytes. First Thessalonians 5 and 21. Okay, hold on a second. Oh, just hold on a second. Let, let me say my point. Let me say my point now. So, if all the Jews of every nation were already there, then that brings a further context to Acts chapter 10. Because if the strangers, of, listen, if the strangers of Rome were there, Cornelius was a Roman Jew, but Jews have already received the, the Holy Ghost in Acts chapter 2. If, if all of the Jews have already received from every nation received the Holy Ghost, then Peter would not have gotten a vision from God in Acts chapter 10, where the Lord said, in verses 14, but Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. The voice said unto him the second time, What God has cleansed, that call not thou common. This was done thrice. The vessel was received up again. Now, while Peter doubted in himself what this vision which he had seen should mean, behold, the men which were sent from Cornelius had made an inquiry for Simon's house and stood before the gate and called and asked whether Simon, which was surnamed Peter, were lodged there. While Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek you. Arise therefore and get thee down and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. Then Peter went down to the men which were sent unto him from Cornelius and said, Behold, I am he whom you seek. What is the cause whereof you come? And they said, Cornelius a centurion, a just man, and one that fears the Lord, and of good report among all the nation of the Jews was warned from God by an holy angel to send for you into your house to hear the words of you. Then called he unto them and lodged them. And on the morrow, Peter went away with them and certain brethren from Joppa accompanied them. And the morrow after they had uh, entered into Caesarea. And Cornelius waited for them and had called together the kins his kinsmen and near friends. And as Peter was coming in, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet and worshipped him. But Peter took him up and said, Stand up, I myself am a man. And as he talked with him, he went in and found many that were come together. And he said unto them, You know how that it is unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one another of another nation. Now number one, it is not a violation for a Jew to keep company with an Israelite. 
It is not a violation for any Israelite to keep company with an Israelite. But it is a violation to keep company with someone who is not an Israelite. Therefore, came I unto you without gainsaying, as soon as I went, see, I was sent for. I asked therefore, for what intent you have sent for me? And Cornelius said, four days ago, I was fasting unto this hour, and the ninth hour I prayed in my house. And behold, a man stood before me with bright clothing and said, Cornelius, your prayer is heard. Your arms are had in remembrance in the sight of God. Send therefore to Joppa and call hither Simon, whose surname is Peter. He lodged in the house of one Simon, a tanner, by the seaside, and when he comes, shall speak unto you. Immediately, therefore, I sent to you, and you has well done that you are come. Now, therefore, are we here present before God to hear all things that are commanded you of God? Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth, I perceive that God is no respecter of persons, but in every nation. He that fears him and works righteousness is accepted of him. Peter knew. That there was something different about Cornelius. He was not an Israelite or a Jew. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That word, I say, you know, which was published throughout all of Judea and began from Galilee and the baptism of John. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. And I'll just jump down. We are witnesses of all these things which he did in the land of Jews and in Jerusalem. Who, you, who they slew and hang on a tree. Him God raised up the third day and showed him openly, not to all the people, but unto witnesses chosen before God, even to us, who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it, it is he which is ordained of God to be the judge of the quick and the dead, to give all the prophets witness that through his name, whoever believes in him should receive the remission of sins. While Peter yet spoke these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all of them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out of the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with new tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water that he should not be baptized, which we receive the Holy Ghost as we? And he commanded them. The reason why I point out this verse is because we already know that there were Grecian Jews Hellenistic Jews in a few chapters prior that were having problems with the Hebrews and there was they had to pick some of the Grecian Jews to serve meanwhile they served in the word of the Lord so we already know all the Jews the 12 tribes of you agreed were already there on Acts chapter 2 the Grecian Jews are already included these are the people that were scattered these are the people that could have been uh, the, 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 the Israel that were Grecian Jews that's fine but now, and then we get into the Ethiopian eunuch, a different type of person who was reading the Hebrew, perhaps, uh, perhaps of the genealogy as well, but a different category. But then we get this new category where it's very clear over and over. He accepts all people of all nations. He had a dream warning him, don't call unclean, which is unclean. This is not speaking of the Hellenistic Jews, Grecian Jews, or all the Jews that were there on the day of Pentecost. We already covered the 12 tribes. This is a different group of people the Gentiles, who is not the nations of the Israel who were already there in Acts chapter 2. This is a new one which required a dream, which shocked Peter, which shocked the circumcised, which even called for a meeting in Jerusalem to have, what should we do with these types of people? It was not the same people in Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 6, or Acts chapter 8. These are the Gentiles. It was not the strangers of Rome. It was Cornelius who was different. And this is why... And this is where I close, why salvation is open to all people that fear him, as Peter said in the word, whoever calls on the name of the Lord. And back to what you said in John chapter 8, where he was sent to the lost uh, sheep of the house of Israel. He explains in John chapter 1, I came unto my own, and my own received him not, Acts verses 12. But as many as received him, to them who believe in his name, to them he gave the right to become children of God. Not necessarily by blood or by the will of man or such, but born of God. And so anyone that is born of God who receives Christ of any nation can be saved. This is where I close. This is where I stand. And if you have a scripture to back that up or not, but if you don't, God bless you. All right. All the best. Thank you. Great discussion, man. All the best. Keep it up. Hebrews, God bless you. God has a special place for you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. 
This is why we must be stewards of the word of the Lord. This is not an issue of rejection towards Hebrews. This is not is uh, replacement theology. This is about God redeeming anybody that will hear his voice and be saved. And as we went through scripture upon scripture, line upon line, we demonstrated over and over again that anyone who's willing to repent of their sins and get right with the Lord by faith can be saved. Amen. It is a hard task to even get to that point. It is by the grace of God and God chooses those whom he will. But we see many times in the Old Testament the people of Persia becoming Jews. Achior in the book of Judith joining in with the people of God. We see in the New Covenant, over and over, God saying to Paul in Acts chapter 9, I'm sending you to preach to the Gentiles, the children of Israel, and the kings, to bear my name. And he said the mystery was that the Gentiles would be fellow heirs with the people of God by faith. And even the people of the kingdom that rejected the Son, their branch will be cut. But anybody that embraces faith in Christ, that's of the Hebrew line, can be grafted in. Just because you have a nationality that doesn't give you access to the kingdom of God, you must be born again. Jesus said it to the tribes of Israel. Unless a man is born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter and he cannot see the kingdom of God. So if you're boasting in your flesh and your bloodline, I'm here to tell you today, God has proven all men under sin. Every one of us under sin. Yes, God has a special place for his people who suffered to bring the word of God. And I acknowledge that and everyone should. Praise the Lord. But all those who trust in Jesus Christ can be saved. And even if it means being a steward, a servant in his kingdom. As the songwriter said, better is one day in his courts than thousands elsewhere. It is a great thing to be called back home and welcomed and say, come on in. And the only way that can happen is by the blood of Jesus Christ. 